Off we go. Here's a question that comes up so often in the comments, and yes, I do read them all. Why, when I want my BMW to accelerate, it just hesitates? Yeah, it's extremely annoying, isn't it? But it's been that way for quite a little while now. Well, what this episode's all about is why it does it, and there's quite a few reasons why it would do it, and how to stop it doing it, so when you really want to get moving, you can just get moving instead of waiting a second for it to decide it appears to want to go faster. I will do something about it at some point. Since the 1990s, BMWs have been designed with two conflicting aims. First of all, to get the most power and performance out of it. It's a driver's car. That was always their tagline. Problem is, going fast and having excellent performance always uses a lot of petrol. So the other conflicting aim was, the car's got to be as economic as possible. So when you're cruising along, the car's in economy mode. And it's changed a whole host of parameters to suit that mode. Now, of course, later models have got this sort of eco button, eco sport. Even those, and this car, and all cars since the 1990s, just watch the way you're driving and change the mode to suit it. So when you're cruising along, you've got about two millimetres of valve lift to start with, and you're not going to slurp much air through that. Cruise control on. Cruising at 60 miles an hour. There we go, that's what we'd expect. Throttle valve open, not much at all really, about 20%. Valve lift, one millimetre, yes. It's amazing how this system works, isn't it? Fantastic. But the valve tronic is extremely quick, so it's not that that's causing the problem. Vanos, that's retarded to a point to eke out every drop of fuel. Vanos is exceptionally far, so, so it's not that that's causing the hesitation. The other thing that's changed is the relationship between the throttle pedal and the engine power, throttle body or valve lift, depending on which mode you're in. So you need a long press before much happens. So if you're gonna just press the throttle down quickly, yeah, you're not gonna get much engine power at all. But the next two things are the most important altogether, and these are the ones which cause the hesitation. You're in the wrong gear to start with. If you're cruising along, you're in sixth gear. You need to be in about fourth or third to get going. But much more importantly than that is the torque converter lockup clutch. Now that's a clutch which joins the output of the engine to the input of the gearbox for the greatest economy. So when you put your foot down the next time, watch the rev gauge, it'll stay where it is for about a second or two and then it will lift up. That is the torque converter lockup clutch. You never get any power until it releases itself so you get torque multiplication in the torque converter and that's what they're there for and that's where the name comes from. So what we need is a way to signal the engine and gearbox that we mean business. And I'm gonna teach you that method. So let's go out on the road and give it a go. Into drive again, and it signals the engine. But yeah, we're in just cruising along mode and not doing much mode. And then you put your foot down an inch and not really much happens. Well, Mercedes coming through here about a ton, I should think. Bit of a daft idea if you ask me. This road, the A3, is well known for having standing water. It just sits across the road. Doing a ton on a car with fat tyres, you just take off. He's okay on this bit, it's not too much standing water here. The bit after the handbar rounded up about, yeah, that's never a good thing if you're going fast. And I've seen on at least five occasions recently, cars actually gone off the motorway or off the A3 and into the hedge and all you can see of it is the sort of back wheels. <laughs> That's what happens when you hit standing water I'm afraid. So while you're cruising along in your lovely BMW, yeah, it's in economy mode. Now if we see a gap open up ahead and we want to put our foot down, not much is going to happen. The pedal's pretty long to start with, torque converter lock-up clutch is engaged 
if you watch the rev gauge, it hardly moves at all. So what we need to do is signal the drivetrain, that's engine and gearbox, that we mean business. And there's a simple arm movement to do this, and I've been using it for years, and it makes such a difference. It's left on the gear stick, which tells the engine and gearbox that you're in sports mode, so you get DS up on, up on the dash, and then up. So two things have happened. We pushed it to the left, that's sports mode, we drop down the gear into fifth, we push forward, that brings it that back into fourth, and that's the right gear when you're doing about 70 miles an hour. For instance, acceleration. The engine has woken up, the relationship between the pedal and the engine has changed, Valvetronic has lifted up, Venus has adjusted itself, it's all ready to go. Most important of all of those things, being the torque converter lock-up clutch, is disengage. Now if you practice it, it will become second nature and it's all in one arm movement. So left and up, one arm movement, you go like this. So it's been left and it's up and now we're in fourth gear and we're ready. If you're coming up to a junction, sometimes third gear is preferred gear. And to do that, you just go left up and up again and you're ready to go. Now ever since 1988, these gearboxes will not let you put it in a gear that will damage either the engine or the gearbox. It just won't allow it to happen. So if, if you're still doing 155 miles an hour at the time and you put it into sports and try and put it down a gear, yeah, that's not going to happen. Right, here we go then. Get ready for the manoeuvre. This speed's probably left up, up, I should think. Here we go, left up, up. There we go, third gear, we like that. Four and a half thousand RPM. Car saying, he's, he means business now, for goodness sake. Have that power ready in the old valve lifted side. I'm ready. Oh, yep, yeah, he's ready too. Throttle body's ready, I'm ready. Ready for power, Captain. Gearbox, yeah, I'm not gonna put the torque converter lock on. You're gonna need all your power. There we go, oh, fantastic. It's great fun. Oh, here comes a Mustang behind us. Wonder how fast they can go. We will find out in a second. Here we go. Lost traction a bit then. Yeah, the Mustang don't go very fast at all, I'm afraid. Or he isn't trying, but you know, it just slows the slug he was. So you notice there that I got all the power I wanted and when I wanted it. Yeah, it's really a case of how you drive the car. Just got to let the slow slug Mustang get past, you know. Don't upset his masculinity, do we? Ooh, it's a GT as well. So what do you do when you want the power? Yeah, you do the left up movement. Here we go, left up. And now the car says, oh, crikey, he wants to do something. And you get power immediately. No waiting for it, just straight there. There we go, straight up to 75 and back to cruising, gearbox back into drive. So that's the trick, it's the left upward movement that gives you the power, it signals the car that it's ready to go. Signals two things, it signals both the gearbox and the engine that you mean business. When you put it, the gearbox into that position, we're now in sport mode. But of course the engine is informed that we're in sports mode as well as the gearbox. Back into drive again and it signals the engine. But yeah, we're in just cruising along mode and not doing much mode. And then you put your foot down an inch and not really much happens. Whereas if I do the same inch with the left up movement, left up, there we go. I, I can assure you I pressed the throttle pedal exactly the same distance, but we took off. So that is the trick to getting power out of your car, and it's really just a case of getting used to that left up movement whenever you need power. It should become just habit. Shouldn't really have to think about it at all. So we've done left up now. Have we got power when we want it? Yep, we probably have. Well, I'm not going to put it on on a corner. Here we go. Wow, okay. That, that's quite a handful, really. All these people are just deciding, oh yeah, right-hand lane seems nice and quiet today. I'll just stay there. 
No, no notice. My car is six inches higher than yours, and for that reason, I'm gonna stay in the fast lane. Yes, I have an overview of everyone in my SUV. Now, this happens every single day on the way home from work. Cars just stay in the fast lane for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I mean, there's no, he's not overtaking anyone, is he? He's just sitting there. Very strange. That's peculiar. Oh yeah, chatting away, that'll be it. Chit chat, chit chat. And there you go then, that was good fun, wasn't it? I enjoyed that, lots of whizzing around and poking the throttle pedal and changing gear and all the rest of it. Yeah, I do love that. It's a good thing to do on a Saturday afternoon, that's for sure. Yeah, it's amazing the big difference between cruising and wanting performance from the car. I, this is a sports car. I mean, that's what it says on the documents, isn't it? 650i, sport, but when you put your foot down an inch or so, it doesn't do anything. You think, well, it's not very sporty, is it? Well, you've got to tell it you want to do something sporty. You can't just press the throttle and say, yeah, I was cruising and I wanted to save petrol a lot, but now I want you to go really fast. Yeah, well, you press the throttle pedal. That, yeah, great. You might just be going uphill for all I know. You've got to tell it. You've got to tell it you want to go faster. Left up. Sometimes left up, up, if you really want to drag it along. But yeah, that'll tell everything it's ready. It'll tell the Valvetronic system to get ready to open up those valves. It'll tell the Phanos system to advance the timing. I tell the blooming gearbox to unlock that torque converter lockup clutch because that's what caused the most problem. It also drops it down the gear by doing left and up. In fact, it drops it down by two gears and that it really helps. And then apart from that, you've got the relationship between the throttle pedal and the amount of power that comes out of the car. That changes all at the same time. So we've got all of these things that change quickly just by doing the left up routine. You've gone sport, you've gone into Steptronic, you're ready to go. And don't forget, you can't damage the gearbox or the engine. It will not put it in a gear that's gonna cause any problems. So don't worry about that. So anyway, if that was good fun for you, stick the thumbs up as always. Thanks for all the comments. Yeah, I'm still in the middle of answering all the comments regarding the E31 and its progress. It's coming on. Thumbs up, keep subscribing, keep commenting, love the comments, and I'll see you next time.